hello and welcome. In this series, let's talk about object-oriented programming, better known as OOP. In this intro to OOP, we are going to discuss structure programming and object-oriented programming. OOP took the best ideas from structure programming and combined those ideas with a few new concepts. We have the option of organizing our program around the code or we can organize our program around data. Structure programming is organized around code while the OOPS concept is organized around data. My name is Rex and I like to share programming and automation knowledge. If you're interested, connect with me on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and GitHub. All of the documents, including the transcript, will be placed on GitHub. Videos are released three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. When it comes to structure programming, the programmer divides the whole program into smaller units. For example, let's take an employee working at a company. First, they submit the resume, attend the interview or interviews, gets hired at the company, perform their job responsibilities, then receive a paycheck. The big program is divided into small units such as calculate salary, calculate bonus, and calculate health benefits. That's what we call code acting on data. Object-oriented programming is different. With this same example of an employee working at a company, our program has a class called employee. It's organized around data and the data controls access to the code. We define the data and we define the methods that are allowed to act on the data. The data is age, employee ID, and title. While the methods are calculate salary and calculate bonus. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of structured and object-oriented programming. There was a point when structured programming reached its limit and could not handle complex applications. Object-oriented programming was created to help developers deal with more and more and more and more challenges as the software application grew. The OOPS concept deals with complex application using classes and objects. Our class is employee, and our objects are Jane and John. Classes are the foundation which builds the entire Java programming language. Also, classes define the nature of an object. In other words, a class is a copy or a template for an object. The same way class has age, our object Jane has age, and the value is 25. Just like the employee class has employee ID and a title, Jane has employee ID with the value of 34 and automation engineer as the title. The same goes for each method, calculate salary and calculate bonus. Jane has access to both methods, calculate salary and calculate bonus. We see how a class serves as a pattern for creating the object. In the same manner, our object John has access to the same data and methods. All object-oriented programming languages have four common traits. 
Those four traits are encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. In some cases, you might see some people say all OOP languages have three common traits, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. Abstract classes, abstract methods, and interfaces falling under inheritance. The concepts remain the same, so it does not matter where we place them as long as we understand the concepts. Encapsulation is a way to protect the data by keeping it safe from outside classes. It can only be accessed through a method within its own class. Inheritance allows a hierarchy creation of classes. It's a component where one class is an extension of a different class. The class that is extended is called a super class, and the class that extends is called a subclass. However, I prefer to say parent class and child class. A child class receives the data and methods from the parent class. This incorporation happens in the declaration of a child class. Polymorphism means many forms. It allows an object to acquire many representations. All of those representations operate similar to each other. As a result, one interface has the ability to take on properties of more than one class. Abstraction is when the necessary details are made available. Abstract classes create a parent class that specifies only a general form shared by the child class. An abstract method contains no body and not implemented by the parent class. That's it for the intro to OOPS. Next, I will demo encapsulation.